Hello everyone. So for this recorded presentation, we will be talking about Toolmark and how it is being used in forensic investigation. So apologies first if there are background noises. Your teacher is currently recording at their home. So maraming maingay po. So to continue when we say toolmark so first let us define what is tool pag sinabi nating tool this is any instrument or object na kapag ginamit natin ay nagiiwan siya ng mark on the other object na pinagamitan niya example of that is when you when you ano when you slice ngaya a meat using a knife that knife left uh, is or will gonna leave or will leave a mark on the meat. Ano pa? So, halimbawa, pillar, what else? Saw or yung ating lagare. So, it will leave a mark on the object after you use that tool. So, here, when we say tool mark, we are defining it as any impression, cut, scratch, gauge, gauge, or abrasion na naiiwanan dun sa object natin na yun after you use that instrument. So, meron siyang classification such as negative and then uh, friction type or combination of the two which will be discussed in the later slides. So, when we say negative impression, so, ang negative impression is kapag yung tool ay prenest natin sa receiving surface and then, ang nangyari is nagiiwan siya ng mark doon sa receiving surface. Ang example nito is kapag ginamit natin ang crowbar or yung, yung bareta na may sungay, in opening our door or window. So, magiiwan siya ng, ng mark doon sa window. And we call that as negative impression. Pag sinabi naman nating abrasion or friction mark, ito yung nangyayari kapag nagkakat tayo ng, ng object and then nags, nagkakaroon ng sliding across a surface. So, when we say sliding, habang pinuputol ngayon natin yung isang object na yun, or uh, while we are using that tool, nagkakaroon siya ng sliding in the surface of that object, and that will have, or that will leave abrasion. Pag sinabi natin abrasion, pag tinignan mo, meron siyang friction, or meron siyang nagkaroon ng friction dun sa dalawang surface. Example ng tools na gumagamit, nagkakaroon ng friction mark ay ang pliers, bolt cutter, knife, axe with letter E, saw, drill, plane, or die. So, ayon. Again, kapag nagiiwan siya ng friction or ng mark across the surface, we call it as abrasion or friction mark. And then, when we say combination naman, of course, combination is a combination of negative and abrasion. Kung saan, kapag nagkaroon ng first, uh, forceful insertion, kanyari, of a crowbar, pwede siya magkaroon ng abrasion and negative impression doon sa window. Okay, kasi ilang beses mong sinuksok yung crowbar, so ano mangyayari? Magkakaroon siya ng negative impression, and then also magkakaroon siya ng friction mark. Okay? So, especially if you exert a force. Ano po? So, how can we have a tool mark in our investigation? So, the first one is knife marks on bones. Kung tinaga yung, yung patient or yung victim. Fractured knife blades. Okay. Another one is homemade explosive devices. Number four is crimp marks on detonation. Makita mo na may movement ng wires doon sa bomb. So, you, you can say na there is a tool being used to detonate that bomb. And then, cut marks on wires and pry marks on a window or door. If, if ngaya, there is a possible or possible um, 
forceful entry doon sa vicinity na yon or sa building na yon may magnanakaw ngaya so it will leave or it, it can leave a prime marks on door or a window okay bakit kailangan natin ng tool mark in the investigation in the forensic investigation kasi it can point out the type of tool that is used by the suspect okay and then of course you can see based kung nagkaroon ng friction mark you can see the shape of the cutting edge of the blade and of course it can pinpoint what kind of blade was used or were used blades were used in the crime and then gaano ka lapad yung width or yung gaano ka lapad yung blade and then the color of the tool if there is a possibility of transfer of paint from the tool to the object and then characteristics of the tool whether ngaya ang tool is a garden tool a carpentry tools ano pa a mechanic tools etc and of course there is a possibility of a unique identifying marks on the tool kagaya ng Phillips screw so si Phillips screw may iba't iba siyang klase so makikita magad siya dun sa mark na may iwanan niya okay and of course we can link this Um, tool mark as evidence to identify a person who commit the crime. And of course, while we are saying that this person committed the crime, we're going to um, say also, based on our evidences gathered, that he committed this crime using this kind of tool. Okay, as accessory material to the commission of the crime. Another one is establishment whether a tool is a given or weapon so that can materialize your investigation and then of course you will establish a connection so probability ngaya of having this kind of crime being committed by the same person meron palang tao na serial murderer pala siya and ang ginagamit niyang crime is kanyari martilyo pinupupok niya yung martilyo so don sa victim So you can say that this is a serial murderer kasi the kind of tools used for several victims ngaya are the same. Okay? Discovered in a series of a crime. Okay? For example, ang ginagamit ng suspect is a bread knife only. So you can establish a connection among the evidences. Uh, what else? <clears throat> It can also determine whether the door or window is forced fully open from inside or outside. So from inside, meaning there is a possibility of escaping. From outside, there is a forceful entrance. And then comparison of tool from a crime scene with your available tool mark found in your crime scene. So, halimbawa, yung tool mark mo is... Um, kutsilyo, so you will be looking in the crime scene for a knife that was used ngaya in the commission of the crime. And then another one is facilities and it facilitates rather and narrow the search for a given tool or weapon. Kung nakita mo na ang ginamit na weapon is kutsilyo, so you will no longer um, look interest to other weapons since what is what what was used in the commissioning of the crime is a cochilio. Okay? So, what else? And then, bakit important siya in crime investigation? Remember, you are looking for a tool mark. And that tool mark can help you understand what kind of tool was used. And then, kung yung bang suspect na yon. Uh, yung tool ng suspect na ginamit na yun match with that mark. Okay, and of course, paano natin hahanapin ang tool mark? The first thing is, tingnan natin kung merong open doors and windows and other openings. And then, pag may nakita ka ng broken, forced, or cut lock, immediately, you will be looking for the tool that was used in opening those. Ano po? <clears throat> What else? So, whenever possible daw, in submission of your 
tool mark and tool in your investigation, kung nahanap mo yung tool that was used in the commissioning of the crime, you will submit the tool mark to the laboratory. So, kung ano yung object na merong tool mark, so yung isa submit mo sa laboratory, alam mo, pintuan, so you will submit the entire window or the portion of the door, rather, pintuan, that was, ano, forcibly used nga nga by, uh, opened by a crowbar by the suspect nga kanyari. If not possible, kasi masyadong mabigat, masyadong maliit, or masyadong mabilis matarnished yung, yung tool mark, as much as possible, carefully photograph it and sketch the area containing the mark. You will be needing that in the court appearance and in your documentation. Next is, of course, pwede ka rin magkaroon ng casting. When we say casting, so pwede mong kopyahin yung tool mark using available materials in your laboratory or your station. Okay? So, ang gumagawa nito is, of course, merong skills. Poor cast, remember, are useless. So, kung pa- pangit ang pagkakakast mo na wala na yung tool mark, so, mabadadamage mo ngayon yung evidence. So, be careful with this kind of getting tool marks. And, of course, you have to preserve and package your tool and tool mark. So, package the object containing the tool marks so that hindi siya ma-alter or matadamage during shipment. Okay? So, pag maliit na object, you have to wrap it with clean paper and you will put that inside an envelope or box. Kung masyadong malaki, you cover it with a clean paper. Pag masyadong malaki din yung object, you will be needing ngaya a cartoon or a crate. Kung hindi naman, is box. And of course, as investigator, you will deliver the tool. And then the tool mark as evidences in person. Wag ipapakisuyo sa ibang tao. And then test mark naman, ginagamit natin to kung meron kang available na object. So you will test your um, hypothesis that this object caused the mark. So kung nakita mo yung object in the crime scene, of course you will protect yourself so you will wear a gloves and then you will try to test that tool and if that person or if that tool rather will create the same tool mark you found in the crime scene and that will be the basis of your comparison okay so thank you so much for listening <music>